Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to create this sort of thinking out of body thing right here. So, you know, we have this image right here and basically what it is is just the piece of footage and then the creation of this like secondary uh, piece of footage that's sort of ghosted and is larger to sort of show the thoughts and the expressions on the, the face. And of course you can do it like this as well where it sort of looks like the person is in deep thought or, you know, thinking within themselves, something like that. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Let's get started. This is a pretty easy effect to pull off. Uh, it does work best whenever you have very stable, very uh, clean footage. So if you have a bunch of camera shake and a bunch of camera motion, you're gonna need to use like warp stabilizer to stabilize it or something uh, so that there isn't that shaking within the sort of ghosted image. So this is sort of the ideal shot. We have, you know, someone standing still. It's on a tripod. All we need to do now is just duplicate this footage up. So to do that, we're gonna hold the Alt key, click on the footage, and then drag it up, and that will duplicate it upwards. And then what we need to do is we need to go click on the top piece of footage, go into blend mode, and set this to screen. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna set this top one so that whenever we scale it up, you'll see that we can actually see through it. So that's what we're gonna do next, is we are going to scale it up. And you'll see that it creates this sort of uh, this crazy little effect right here. But what we're going to do is we're going to scale it to about the, the size that we want the final product to be. And then we want to move the footage over to the side or somewhere else, uh, wherever we want that sort of ghosted image to appear. And so now we have it right here. But you'll see that it's still pretty messy. We have this, this line at the edge over here where the, uh, the top piece of footage ends. So we have this sort of really strong point here and then it's all really bright here as well. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to go make sure we're still selected on the top piece of footage, click on opacity, and then we're gonna use the free draw Bezier tool. And we wanna probably change this away from fit to maybe like 25% so we have a little room on the bottom and on the top here. And what we wanna do is just create a basic mask here. This is why a subject that's not moving in a tripod shot will help because we can create the mask pretty easily. So we'll just try to go somewhere right around the edges here, trying to remove as much of the background as possible. If you have a really complex or moving background, you'll probably have to go into After Effects and actually rotoscope it out, which is a very, very precise way. This is just a way to do it when it's not very precise. So now what we have is we have sort of created the ghost image and we still have some sharp lines in there. So we're gonna go into our mask one that we just created and then we're just going to increase the feather a little bit. And that's going to help blend it into the background right here. And now you can just see it just looks like it's glowing a little or something like that. And then now what we do is we just click the play button and you'll see that we've created this sort of zoomed in ghost image right here. And you can see that, you know, you can like see through it. This couple walking back here is originally there. And it's just like we put this, this secondary sort of thing over it and now we have our final product. So let's do it on a the other piece as well. This is a slightly more complex one. So we put it into here and you'll notice it isn't a perfect tripod shot. It's moving from the right to the left, but it is a very, very sort of stable movement. There's no camera shake, there's nothing like that. So we can still work with this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to go ahead and duplicate the footage by holding Alt, clicking and dragging up. And then we're gonna maybe cut off the very beginning here, just sort of get into the, the movement a little bit more. So let's kind of go bring it to here and make sure you have both of them selected when you do this, this movement here so that they're still synced together. And now what we're gonna do is go to the top footage and again, set this blending mode to screen so that we have that ghosted image created. Now we're going to scale this up and you'll see that the problem is it's on the left side and we want it to maybe look on the right side. We could of course do what we did in the last one and maybe have this like scaled up right here and do a mask around here and then it's sort of like, you know, it shows a little close up of him. However, I wanted to do more of like a, you know, a personal in deep thought thing where they're looking at themselves. So to do that, we need to go into our effects down here and search for flip. We will then be presented with the options under video effects and transform the horizontal flip. We want to take that and we want to drop it on our first, our top piece of footage, our ghosted piece of footage. And you'll see now that we flip it across here. Now we want to take this and we want to move it into space right about here. And then we want to go ahead and create ourselves a mask. So to create ourselves a mask, what we're going to do is do the exact same thing like last time, grab that free uh, Bezier tool, and then just sort of create a close up mask right here. Just like so. And now we've cut them out again. We're gonna go ahead and feather this up. 
and you'll notice that there is still a little bit of white in the background and this sometimes can't be avoided just because of how this works. However, you can lower down the opacity and raise the opacity to make it a little bit more or less noticeable and you can try to maybe even bring in the mask expansion and that's going to take that mask you created and it's going to draw it in towards the person. So if you draw it in closer, we can remove most of it. We will lose a little bit of the person, but this is supposed to be, you know, sort of a ghosted image. Maybe lower or keep that right there. Try to scale it up a little more. Move it back into position. And yeah, now that's looking pretty good. Now, you'll notice that we have a problem right here in that the person is sort of moving out of the clip a little bit. So we don't want that to happen. What we want to do to sort of counteract that movement is we want to take this and we actually want to move it sort of opposite of where it's going. So if we take this and we hit the position and we move over, we want to bring this person back into view. So we'd bring it back here. But now that brings up another problem is the fact that our mask isn't moving either. So we're going to have to move the mask as well. But now you can see that basically the person is standing still here and the mask is moving. So we need to change the mask as well. So all we did, all we did with there was just animate the position over. I uh, created a keyframe, moved it over, and then just moved it back to relatively the same position. It's okay if it moves a tiny bit, as long as it's generally in the same place here. So next thing we want to do is we want to go into our mask, go into mask path. So let's go ahead and use this arrow to jump to the very beginning here. Go to mask path. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this arrow again to jump to the very end. The reason we're doing this is to make sure these keyframes are aligned with these keyframes. And now all it is is we just need to select mask one and just grab it and move it back over the person right like so. And now we basically have the effect where it's this person, you know, looking at himself like so. And that is basically it. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go to that subscribe button and make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.